The Bitcoin and Ethereum market seem to be experiencing some notable crashes recently, and if you are a newbie investor or someone who is not yet used to the ways of this industry, the fear and anxiety surrounding these crashes is truly understandable. But just as the saying goes, at the end of the rainbow is a pot of gold. For crypto investors that have been around since it all started, this is a saying that they try to live by when these unexpected falls happen, and although it is not something that is easily understood, there might be enough and substantial reasons to believe that the worst may have come, but the best is yet to. Thank you for watching Diversified Streams, your go-to YouTube channel for all things crypto and finance. Be sure to check out our community post about these subjects. We are curious to know your opinions on these matters. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest news and tips related to crypto. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you'll be updated with our latest videos. We frequently post so you wouldn't want to miss them. Today we are talking about the crashes that have happened in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and how they are more of an opportunity for investors rather than a threat. Of course, we will be tackling this video with expert opinions from one of the pillars of crypto himself, Raoul Pal. He has some interesting points worth discussing, so let's get started. This is happening faster, and at the very center of it is a system of money and value, which means that in itself it is going to accrue value faster than anything else, because that's what it's actually doing, is taking value from old places and putting it into a new place. So the opportunity set is so big, it is that perfect nexus of macro and crypto because the macro is so fucked, which we've known for so long. You know, the massive debt, the bad demographics, you know, the, the polarization of the world again, the deglobalization, the globalization, all the mess that that caused. All of that is going on in macro land, which is pretty miserable. And here's the solution in front of our eyes. I mean, what a time to be alive. And that's why it's so important. Everybody needs to understand this stuff, whether you're trading this stuff, building businesses, or you're just observing it. It is incredibly, incredibly important. Since I first discovered Bitcoin in 2013, been of the opinion that this was the a parallel financial system that's being built. In the last 18 months, I've realized that it's bigger than just a financial system. It's in fact the entire system of value, transfer, storage, and ownership in the new digital world. It is probably one of the biggest things I've ever heard of or seen. And it is an incredibly exciting moment in time to be part of it. And it's like learning about the the discovery of oil when the you know the Rockefellers and all of these guys started figuring out that you know the oil was gonna make the world go round. Had you been an investor and a participant and understood what it could do and what businesses you could build across the network of oil or the mobile phone or the internet. The fortunes that were made, the changes that happened were so staggering. And this is happening faster. And at the very center of it is a system of money and value, which means that in itself, it is going to accrue value faster than anything else, because that's what it's actually doing is taking value from old places and putting it into a new place. So the opportunity set is so big, and it, it is that perfect nexus of macro and crypto because the macro is so fucked, which we've known for so long. You know, the massive debt, the bad demographics, you know, the, the polarization of the world again, the deglobalization, the globalization, all the mess that that caused. All of that is going on in macro land, which is pretty miserable. And here's the solution in front of our eyes. I mean, what a time to be alive. And that's why it's so important. Everybody needs to understand this stuff, whether you're trading this stuff, building businesses, or you're just observing it. It is incredibly, incredibly important. So ISM going down, what does that say? It says that the probability of stimulus in the future is going up because the economy is, going, is slowing down. So basically about nine months ago, ISM peaks and starts going down. So that tells you that in nine months time, i.e. about now, we should start to see a turn of stimulus. Do we see any evidence of that? Well, in Europe, they're starting to do stimulus. But it's in this direct handout stimulus pattern that I've talked about in the past, which is, hey, listen, you guys are getting killed on your electricity bills. Let, let us help you. It's still right. stimulus. You know, it's not central bank printing yet, but the stimulus coming into the system and it's happening in China, 
It's happening in Europe. The Japanese are doing something different. They are expanding the balance sheet by buying JGBs and devaluing their currency. It's called yield curve control. The US, many states have given out handouts to pay for electricity bills. So at the margin, things are changing. The bond market's still thrashing around trying to figure this out because a quantitative tightening is um, confusing the picture for bonds because bond liquidity is ultra low, as bad as it was. Well, not yet as bad, but it's the second worst it's been since the global financial crisis. So there's a there's an issue going on there. But generally speaking, if I look at things like forward break-even rates, they're telling us inflation is kind of in freefall right now. So those are all of the things that will tell us this. But ISM nine months forwards, so as long as ISM is falling fast, the probability goes up. I looked back and found that every single time the ISM crossed 50 to the downside, the Fed stopped or cut, stopped hiking or cut. They only stopped hiking once, which was 2016. Every single other time they cut soon after. Now, because of this inflation narrative that's left, I don't think they cut immediately, but I think they stop pretty fast. As soon as they see the economy imploding, first order thinking is recession bad. The actual thinking is, if there were to be a recession for three years, what are the central banks doing? Right, because that's unemployment rising for three years and inflation falling for three years. What would the central banks be doing? They would be trying to stimulate as much as possible because we have not had a four year recession in well, as long as I think not even the 30s. I don't think it was that long. So but let's assume it's the 1930s again. That is incredibly positive crypto because there's a right. massive debasement of currency having to happen to try and protect the world falling apart because of the debt burden. So again, it's not about are we in recession? It is what is the outcome as growth slows? What happens to liquidity on a forward looking basis? The world of smart contracts has barely started. I mean, literally everything we do in life is a contract. I mean, you and me to appear today together is a verbal contract. Hey, Ash, will you be there at this time? Yes, I'll be there at that time. If not, Brian Caputo is going to shout at us or Nick will shout at us. You know, it's a contract enforced by the wrath of God, which is Nick and Brian. But um, but we do. But everything is a contract in life. And once you start seeing the world in those terms, you realize that so many of these can be automated. And automated contracts mean high velocity of money, um, less friction, less intermediary costs, all sorts of stuff in ways that we can't imagine. It's a scary world out there. Everybody is super bearish about everything. The game is to look forwards and not look at today, not extrapolate the worst, but extrapolate the most likely outcomes. The most likely outcome is not nuclear war, people dying of hunger in the streets of Europe. The most likely outcome is a solution. Um, a most likely outcome is an increase in liquidity. A most likely outcome is a recession followed by a recovery. If you're armed with some sort of probabilistic framework and time work of that, these look like good times to be accumulating digital assets for the long haul. Because it's a weird old world where you get used to, once you've been in this space for a while, kind of an 80% pullback is normal bear market, like a 20% pullback is a bear market in equities. It's 80% in crypto. The upside average is like 20x. So the risk rewards are huge. Even if I'm wrong and it goes down 50% from here, Bitcoin goes down 50% here, down to 10,000, but the upside is 20x. Well, that's still a ridiculous 40x risk reward. Why would you not take that bet? Just don't do it with leverage. That's the only thing, always. If you are a crypto buyer who is looking for the right time to invest in Bitcoin or Ethereum, it may seem like a prank, but Raoul Pal says you should do so now. There are crashes happening here and there, and it does not look good to be joining in on the fun at a surface level. But he has enough reasons to believe that this is the prime time to be putting your money in these assets, as the opportunity to gain bigger returns in the future is more solid if you enter the market now in this state. It is not easy to be bullish when these things happen. But Pal believes in his recent AMA macro investor talk that this is the much needed push for cryptocurrency to take over the monetary system, as well as the Fed getting more involved in the development of policies related to crypto.
Raoul Powell's opinion on these crashes being the optimal time to invest and get back on crypto dates back to 2013, which was the first time he got into Bitcoin. He likened this current scenario to the discovery of oil, which back then at first, no one paid attention. It was not a serendipitous moment that everyone found especially momentous, as it took some time for people to find the essence of it. Now, oil is the most sought after thing in the world, and people who were around to harness it in the beginning are earning more than anyone in the whole world. Talking about crypto, the crashes that have been happening is the nexus that Raoul called it. It is the catalyst needed to finally realize substantial value in Bitcoin, and is a way for us to really clean out the mess that is happening in the crypto space today. Another case he exemplified is the fall of ISM, or its eventual decline that happened after it reached a peak sometime 9 months ago. As a result, there's a stimulus that was sent out by countries in Europe and Asia, where we've seen Japan do some sort of a yield curve control due as a part of its initiative to devalue the yen. There's also the quantitative tightening that caused the bond market to struggle in terms of bond liquidity. All these things happening is an indication that the inflation we are experiencing right now is in a state of freefall, and the continuous drop ISM experiences may result in a stable growth of stimulus. Based on the behavior of ISM, each time it experienced a downside, the Fed either stopped hiking or cutting. And in 2016, it did stop hiking. After that, they would start cutting every now and then. This time is a different story though, as we are seeing basically the same thing. Only now, there's inflation that is also in the game. The Fed does not have the same freedom as it did months ago, so it was difficult to cut immediately. What they did though is stop faster normally than what they did in the past. From here on, curiosity spared as to what a recession would look like in these times. Pal noted that the last recession in the whole world happened sometime in the 1930s, but having one right now would be positive enough for crypto because of the debasement happening in currency. We're definitely seeing the glamorization of some events here just so investors may be swayed into investing at a time that clearly does not look like it would be feasible to do the same. But we want to know your thoughts on this. Do you feel like it is still okay to be investing despite these conditions? Or should we wait until it goes a little less severe? Comment your ideas in the comments below. And while you're at it, check if you already have liked this video and subscribe to our channel. If you haven't, now's the time to do it so you'll be part of our community. Pal sees the world as something that's run by contracts. And while it may not be 100% truth, it is still very much a truth especially in the context of crypto. These contracts have a way of transpiring outcomes that may not be looking good at the surface, but are actually the needed leverage in order for crypto to thrive and realize more gains. Once these recession-like things happen, we are essentially seeing a go signal for investors to start buying coins and investing their money in crypto, accumulating assets and storing them until the valuation jumps at a higher rate. It is a vision that's not easy to come by. But if Raul says that it is what we need for the space to thrive amid the crashes, then it would be a play worth partaking in. And that is it for today's video. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. As always, if you did, please show us some love and support by giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you will be updated whenever we post new videos on all things related to crypto. This has been Diversified Streams. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you in our next video.